Welcome to episode 107 of the Startup Show. Today in the hot seat is Andrea, the CEO and co-founder of Bilte. And today we talk about baseball, we talk about real hustle, and we talk about Bilte, the startup. Make sure to stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to episode 107 of the Startup Show. Today we are here at the Impact Hub in Zurich and I'm very excited to welcome Andrea who is the CEO and co-founder of Bilte today in my hot seat. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome everybody. Thank you. So, excited to be here. <laughs> very good. I'm very excited that you are here. Andrea, please take it away. Give us a short introduction about who you are. My name is Andrea Girasola. I'm originally from uh, Italy, from Rimini, known as a party town. Yeah. <laughs> as a matter of fact, my parents are entrepreneurs and they, they own a club and restaurants there. I came here six years ago yeah. because um, I have also a Swiss passport through my mother. I came here to play baseball, which is one of my <laughs> big passion, to play for the Swiss national team. And uh, I end up here having a startup in well, fintech. <laughs> so you're kind of a sports celebrity hosting here. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, baseball is not that popular. So we are 10 or 15 playing. So it's not that hard to be in the national team. Like. Tell, me, tell me about entrepreneurship. Is there anything specifically you said, like uh, you kind of have it in your blood from your parents? Is there anything that like you would say like that, like fascinate you about the entrepreneurship path? Well, definitely. Uh, the first thing, uh, what I like is the freedom to decide about your future, mm -hmm. to decide about what you want to do, to have project and never give up to actually realize those projects. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about entrepreneurship. You're the founder of Bilte. Yep. Uh, maybe give us a little bit of an insight exactly what do you do there in terms of a pitch deck, uh, elevator pitch, so we understand and we're all on the same page? It's really easy. Uh, we digitize the entire building chain yep. on the company side, but also on the consumer side, so on the customer of the companies. That means like if you have a product that you want to sell and you need to send the, the invoice through your customers, mm -hmm. you can do this directly through us. Uh, we automatize the entire chain so you don't have to, you can forget about these invoices basically until the, the invoice is not paid because the, our system does it automatically. So you don't have to remind the customer that he has to pay on time, maybe he's, he's delaying his bills, everything is done by our platform. On the other side, the customer received the invoice per email. He can directly pay the invoice through the email or ask for a different kind of payment solution. So in, in a case where a payment needs to be restructured or he has not enough cash flow to pay the invoice right now, he can pay this through us in rates and we pay the invoice for him fully immediately. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So maybe if you, let's say, walk me through, let's say, the, the process of, of a customer of yours, how does it look like and how do they use your platform, let's say, from beginning when you first approach them till they have the implemented solution? So they can start using uh, the platform from day one. So from day one, they yeah. can switch from paper invoice to digitized invoice. What does it mean? You simply need to create, the, let's say, a PDF invoices and drag and drop this PDF into our platform. Mm -hmm. The platform read the the email, uh, the name, the address of the customers, and put this information in the different bucket in the, in the platform. And we send uh, these uh, invoices to the right person. The right person receive an email address where there is a link, where you click on the link, and you can pay this invoice directly from there. Where do you stand, let's say, with the development of the whole platform? We start testing our MVP uh, this year, and uh, this month and next month. And uh, we want to close the closed beta by end of February. So, you know, one of the things that like what is a little bit special about Build is that like you were able to go through the incubation phase um, at F10. And uh, maybe you can share with my audience and myself. Um, I think, by the way, I think it's the first F10 uh, startup that I'm hosting here. Maybe you can share a little bit of your experience uh, that you had there. Um, as, a, as an accelerator. Just to give you a little bit of background, accelerators are popping up anywhere. Yeah. Um, so maybe we get an understanding like what F10 is so special about them. Let me start saying that I end up in the F10 kind of like uh, randomly. <laughs> this was not planned that I would actually do uh, an accelerator, incubator and accelerator. I was working in, for an IT company. They sent me to the six hackathon for uh, networking. Yeah. And I came out, out of there with an idea that uh, six liked. So they actually asked me if I would like to send an application to the F10. I had no idea back then what was the F10. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I sent an application and uh, the process was really quick and I ended up actually entering the F10. The F10 was an amazing experience. First of all, you're in contact with different 
startups, they are doing different kind of uh, product, they're developing different kind of things in different kind of fields. So you learn also from the startup how they are doing, what they are doing. On the other side, it's really important because they open to, for you a lot of doors. Especially it's easier to, to speak with important corporates like Six, Balois, Generali. They help you to stay focused on your goal. You know, so the, the, the final goal is uh, to bring on the market something that uh, the clients want, mm -hmm. and uh, they help you a lot with that. Mm -hmm. Maybe make you point out also as kind of like yeah. advice to to aspiring entrepreneurs, like how do how do you make sure that like you have something that the market really wants? What I did, I, f I firstly started um, since it was a really early stage idea. I firstly had uh, this idea for myself. Yeah. So I thought, uh, would I use uh, such a product? And uh, I end up answering yes. <laughs> and then I ask, start asking to my group of friends that have companies, group of friends they, they receive bills, and all of them said yes. And going through the program, we start interviewing uh, people that we don't know. So we start interviewing companies, we start interviews to new clients, and then we end up, uh, from the interview, we found out that actually is a product that would be helpful on the market. If you look um, around your team, is there anything that like, we would say, like, this is the key characteristic why we have an A-team? Personality-wise, um, each one of, uh, of the team members needs to complete uh, each other. That means that it's really important to communicate to each other. It's really important to share problem, to share uh, success. I would say this is the key uh, metrics to measure the success of, the, of a team. Mm -hmm. But how do you do it inside your team? We are friends also not uh, in, uh, in our company, we are friends also outside the company. Yeah. That means that uh, um, this allowed us to share a lot of thoughts, not only in the working environment, but also outside the working environment. And I think this is uh, really important. When you look, at, let's say, around you um, in terms of like what's going on in fintech, um, is there anything, any trend that you see that is, um, let's say, also what you get perceived from the F10, anything Particularly, we would say like those are the trends for the next couple of years within fintech. I don't know for the next couple of years. I can tell you the trend right now is definitely blockchain or Bitcoin. Yes, <laughs> because everywhere when you do a pitch or uh, when you present your your company, they ask us. Uh, uh, so you also do something with blockchain or not? And then there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so these are the keywords now: blockchain, Bitcoin, and also I would say like AI. Yes. These are the three. Yeah, keywords to use. <laughs> that you see, that's, that's interesting. And and last but not least, um, do you see, let's say, the Swiss uh, startup ecosystem when you, let's say, I don't know if you have any comparison to other nations or other places in the world, but do you see anything that, let's say, uh, you know, is missing here or lacking here or something that we could, as an ecosystem in Switzerland, that we could improve? I cannot compare to other countries because I, I don't know enough the environment in other countries. But what I can say in Switzerland would be actually it's really hard to do a startup in Switzerland because it's a country that is really expensive. So if you start a startup, usually you have like one, two, three years without where you don't earn anything. So you need to make sure to plan this um, ahead because otherwise you will be starving. <laughs> so it would be actually interesting to have uh, helps from uh, or helpful to have help from uh, from the state. So it would be nice if the state could support uh, new ideas and could select maybe the top hundred or. 20 best ideas and support them. Support them? Uh, financially. Financially. Yeah. Not with, a, well, not with a kind of investment, I would say, but would be actually important, maybe kind of like a salary, a small salary aside, so the, 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 uh, the, the startupers could actually survive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw, I saw the issue with like the AG. Yeah. Uh, to bring uh, 50 or 100,000 Swiss francs up front is not so simple. No. Now we get into a very exciting section, which is called The Audience Asks. And we had a question coming in, thank you very much, to Erika Müller on Twitter. What are the three things a startup founder who is not a developer can do to recruit tech talent into their company? Oh, this, <laughs> this is a tough question. Are you, are you a tech guy? No, I'm not a tech the guy. business guy? Yeah, I'm okay. a business guy. So actually, this is a really interesting question. As a business person, I'm quite good in networking. So during my career, I met different kind of people that have different kind of knowledge. To choose the right tech partner, what I did is actually asking to one of these person that I met during my career, then I know through the, the project that he made before he's uh, a good person, um, to have a look on the people that I choose, if their code is actually uh, well developed <laughs> or makes sense, you know. <laughs> so I ask basically, a connection that I know that is a is a, a good developer. If actually the the people that I'm asking to to join me are capable to do what I'm, I'm I need to do. Okay, cool. 
Very cool. Yeah. Okay, good. So thank you for this insight. Uh, I guess, yeah, no, I mean, it makes sense to get an expert on board when, when you need one and uh, make sure to, to get it out there. So Erika, thank you very much uh, for asking the question. Thank you for your answer. What's most important to you in an investor? The most important for us is that um, believes in the idea. And uh, it doesn't support us only with the money, but it support us also in uh, make, making us know maybe the right person or helping us to bring the product on the market. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, like, you know, I've never heard anybody say, like, we want dumb investors so far, especially <laughs> in the early stages. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's interesting to hear what, what, what startups are actually looking for. Okay, second question. Who do you admire in the, st- in the startup world? I have to say, I'm fairly new in, uh, <laughs> in, this, uh, in the startup world. Um, I would never actually think to do a startup, especially in a fintech environment. So there is, at the moment, there is not uh, a person that I really admire because I'm... I'm too new. Uh, too too new. new. Too new, yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, like in the fintech, there are, there are a couple. Like, for example, Mark Wernicke. Mm-hmm. He's very much into fintech, Finlib. I'm not sure he was also a guest here once. I, I really like him. He's a, he's a very good guy, very visionary. Um, the way he also now approaches all the crypto and blockchain. So that's very interesting. That's my per- person, especially, let's say, when you look into fintech. Yeah. You know him? Um, no, I didn't ha- get the chance. Yeah, so watch my video. Yeah, right. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when you think back, I'm not sure if you have already, but how did you get your first paying client? This came through interviews. Yeah. What I simply did is uh, pick up the phone start calling and I saw that this didn't work out. So what I did after that, I went knocking on doors. Yeah, like physically? <laughs> physically, yeah. I knock on doors of companies and I said, look, I'm, uh, my name is Andre Jerusalem, I'm doing a FinTech startup. And uh, when you say these two words, actually people get excited. Really? <laughs> yeah. But you have to get through security, you have to get to the right ah, person? No, well, not through security, you just, uh, basically, um, we are targeting small and medium enterprise. Yes. So if you just go there and say like, I would like to talk with the CEO and the CEO is basically next door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's amazing. That's yeah. true hustling, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, uh, I mean, everything went quick. Uh, once you, you say like, I'm here for an interview, I just want to see how is your billing process? Uh, yeah. How does it work? And I saw that there is an interest in, in what the, we are doing and then everything started from there. Yes, makes sense. Very cool. Um, shows to scale the unscalable, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> okay, next question. Tell us one thing you learned the hard way. It's not that easy because when you enter in an incubator, you immediately think after that, uh, okay, after six months I will be rich <laughs> or my company will start uh, uh, running immediately. Instead, it takes a bit more time than yeah. that. So it's like a long process. So you need to be really sure that you want to do this. Patience is key. Exactly. Patience. Exactly. Exactly. Um, last but not least, um, risk seeker or risk averse, and why? Uh, I would say risk seeker. Why? Because in the startup world, you have to take risk. Mm-hmm. You have to take risk, and you need you need to nail them down, and you need to go through through them. Otherwise, uh, you you you're th- you're thinking like a corporate but you don't have the same money and resources to right. think like a corporate, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Good, so for part four, uh, you get about 30 seconds to give my audience um, some expert advice where you feel you are an expert in what field you choose uh, is up to you. Honestly speaking, I don't think I will, I will be I'm the right guy to give advice to anybody. But if you want to have an advice for me, I think I'm an expert in never giving up. And uh, to have a startup, this is really important. You really have to stick with your idea. You really have to believe in your idea. And you have to go through a lot of difficulties and a lot of hard times. But uh, eventually you will end up with uh, success somehow. <laughs> somehow. Good. good. End up in success. I guess that's a good way to, to yeah. end this show. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Andrea, for being on the show with me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much, everybody who tuned in today. And I'll see you next week with a new episode of The Startup Show. Have a great day. My name is Douglas Azar. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Wealth Initiative. We're a wealth tech based in Zurich. And we uh, cater to the wealth management industry. And make sure you tune in next Monday to find out more about what we do.